Clients and longtime followers of Oak Harvest audio and video investment content will know that our investment team likes to invest in a diversified group of dividend growth stocks in addition to more standard blue chip growth stocks. In doing so, many of the portfolios our team manages take on the characteristics of what many in the industry call a barbell approach. A group of growth stocks paying little to no dividends with specific traits on one side of the barbell or scale, and a second group of more economically stable slower growing companies paying out some of their excess cash flow back to shareholders in the form of dividends. For this video, I'll break down this barbell investing approach into two separate dumbbells and focus this video solely on the dividend paying investment component, specifically dividend growth compounding companies. I'm Chris Paris with Oak Harvest Financial Group in Houston, Texas, and welcome to our weekly Stock Talk podcast, keeping you connected to your money. Before we get into this week's topic, please take a moment to click on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you'll be alerted when our team uploads our latest content. We do have a new location for our Oak Harvest investment oriented content. You can find it by typing Stock Talk with Chris in the Google search window or by going to Oak Harvest's YouTube channel and clicking on the drop down tab labeled channels and clicking on the Stock Talk with Chris. As Troy, Charles and I discussed on our February 22nd YouTube live stream, our financial team at Oak Harvest loves stocks that pay our clients cash dividends over time. We specifically like to invest in companies that can be dividend growth compounders, not only paying dividends, but raising that cash dividend distribution over time. We aren't focused on investing in high absolute yielding stocks, but would rather find companies whose business is organically growing, who can still distribute an ever increasing cash payout by way of excess free cash flow before borrowing for debt to its shareholders over future years. As we've discussed in prior videos, dividends are just one of the two components of a stock's total return, the other being a stock price appreciation or depreciation. Even at the broad stock market level, such as the S&P 500, dividend multiplier effect and compounding is important. According to data from a calculator from DQY, dividends and their reinvestment have contributed to almost 40% of the S&P 500 total return since 1930, 30% since 1960, 25% since 1980, and even 30% since the top of the dot-com bubble, which includes the roaring 2010 through 2020 period, where FANG growth stocks paying little to no dividends led. You can find a link to this fabulous calculator in the description below. Here's the summary from the data post-World War II era, September 1945 through 2022, which also shows dividends accounting for about 33.5% of the market's total compounding return. It's quite the powerful calculator showing dividends and their reinvestment makes sense even at the passive index investing level. Here's a visual of the drip returns, that's dividend reinvestment effects, of compounding in a boring S&P 500 index the last 40 years since 1982. Reinvesting dividends back into the index would have enhanced your total return by about 25% or almost 2.5% annually for 40 years. Over four decades, that is a massive compounding effect for savers and retirees. Taking it down a level to a single stock level, investing in longer term dividend compounders is particularly welcome to retirees and near retirees looking for additional sources of cash income. Investors always have the ability to turn off the automatic dividend reinvestment plan and revert to letting these cash dividends build up in their investment accounts for current or future spending needs. In addition to dividend income, these types of companies have historically offered investors a higher quality earnings yield, as well as less volatility in total return. Take a look at this great chart from Vanguard showing the higher quality aspects of an equity dividend growth strategy compared to overall markets. As one can see from the table on the left, these companies have exhibited higher returns on both equity and return on assets, while at the same time showing lower return volatility over time. I also have to note looking at the table on the right, that these characteristics also hold for a universe of foreign equities with established and growing dividend profiles. In other words, investing in dividend compounders has also been a profitable risk return strategy in overseas markets over time. However, as we've discussed in prior videos, all dividend yields are not the same. Just because a company pays a five, seven, or 9% dividend doesn't make it better than one that's paying only two, three, or 4%. Hence, our focus on sustainable dividend growth not absolute yield levels. In fact, our research, as well as the likes of Vanguard and others, show this, that on average, the group of stocks yielding the highest level of dividends are most often value traps, not value stocks. Check out Vanguard's stats on value and yield trap. Remember investors, when one invests in equities, we should be looking at total return, 
the combination of dividends and price appreciation. A stock that declines year after year, but pays you a high dividend is not adding value to your portfolio or your financial plan unless you're in need of a capital loss carry forward. Take example of two semiconductor companies in the last 20 years. Remember investors, we're talking about the stocks as an investment. We're not talking about whether we like the company as an employer or a customer. The analysis is about investment returns on your capital. We're going to compare Intel versus Texas Instruments once again for a total stock market return perspective. I've referenced this example a few times over the last year. Here's a side-by-side -side picture of the total return of Texas Instruments versus Intel since the dot-com bubble peak over 20 years ago. The total return of Texas has been nearly 375%, with over 215% of that being price, and the remainder being the reinvestment of their dividend over time. During that same time period, Intel stock has a negative total return. The stock has declined over minus 45%, and the dividends they've paid shareholders didn't get investors back to break even on a total return basis. At the same time, had you invested your money in just the passive S&P 500, you would have returned about 190% in the index and another 150% on its compounding dividend had you been a dividend reinvestment plan. In addition, Intel just a few weeks ago cut its dividend by 75% back to levels last seen decades ago. Intel's lagging price returns for the last two decades was because of their declining business position in the semiconductor industry relative to other industry players, such as Taiwan Semi, AMD, NVIDIA, and others. Their high dividend payout to shareholders could not offset the lagging performance of Intel stock. Unsurprisingly, the stock's relative performance to an industry and the overall S&P 500 was sniffed out years ago years before they cut their dividend. Investors, there is no perfect investment philosophy that is all weather, outperforming every stock cycle or e every economic environment. However, long-term research finds that investing in consistent dividend growers and compounders and then reinvesting those dividends back into the companies has proven to be one of the better and more consistent ways to compound your money over time with lower equity volatility. At Oak Harvest, our dividend growth strategy is just one of many tools our advisors have to help our clients meet their retirement goals and objectives. In future videos, we'll discuss other tools, such as a blue chip growth portfolio of stocks that places less emphasis on dividend growth and more on stock price, capital appreciation, and compounding, which is tax-free and taxable accounts until it's realized. Our team has multiple market and insurance-based tools that we can use to meet your retirement goals. The Oak Harvest team serves our clients by helping them plan for their future needs instead of focusing on the past. The future in the stock markets are always uncertain, and that is why our retirement planning teams plan for your retirement needs first and your greed second. Give us a call to speak to an advisor and let us help you craft a financial plan that helps you meet your retirement goals. Call us here at 877-896-0040 and schedule an advisor consultation. We're here to help you on your financial journey into and through your retirement years. From myself, Troy, Jessica, James, Charles, the whole team, we hope you have a great weekend.